Rockaways Productions presents The Casey Water Show Episode 272 Independent Spiritual Foundations Hello, I'm your host, Casey Waters. Today, I will continue with a house with many rooms. Here, I look at how empathy can help you understand diversity in culture and how cultural diversity may be limited by a variety of factors. Then, it's on to independent spiritual foundations. Here, I look at how to establish an independent spiritual foundation that will provide stability later on in life. Well, at least in theory. Today's show will feature background footage from Little Pisgah Mountain. This is the mountain I live on. So, I started on Pine Bluff Road and I headed upward to Little Pisgah Road and then on to Water Mountain Road where I went along the Eastern Continental Divide. Little Pisgah Mountain is just north of Girton, North Carolina. So, now, let's continue with a house with many rooms. Well, Islam is, well, we need to try to understand Islam, but they impose their will on other cultures too, just like Christianity does. So we need to have less imposing by all religions. Let's just chill out and let the other religions who aren't imposing themselves on other religions and countries, let them flourish. And perhaps let them impose a bit if they want. Why not? Everyone should have a fair shot. Everyone should have an equal voice. All religions, all cultures, instead of a few dominating by too much missionary work and too much, well, too much domination. Often it comes in at the hand of the sword or the gun. Often it, this missionary work, of course, is accompanied by military work sometimes. Um, this was more true in the past, but I guess it extends to the present too, of course. As there's various um, wars being fought over religion. Well, I guess ISIS is a good example in the modern world. But anyway, with ISIS trying to impose its brand of Islamic faith on other cultures and religions. But anyway, so, we need to understand this. And so, of course, with the Charlie Hebdo attacks, well, Je suis Charlie. I am Charlie. We need to have empathy and understand the perspective of the satirical cartoonist. Everyone should have a right to make fun of anything. And we should be ready to be on the receiving end too. If we could dish it out, we certainly should be able to take it. So we should be ready to have a little satire thrown at our culture, too. Anyway, another thing we need to work on is the conquer and divide mentality. This is something to be avoided. Remember, people in position of power and influence often use conquer and divide to rule over 
a group of people or groups of people. So by stirring up strife, racial tensions, religious tensions, and other tensions, well, if we're busy fighting each other, we might not notice what's going on. So, and what's going on is corporate America is having more and more influence over our government, over our diet, over our education, and our lives. That's what we need to be focused on. You know, not us versus them, you know, for whatever reason. We need to be unified. And of course, with the Ferguson shooting and, and other shootings across the country, where black people have been targeted, well, that needs to end. We need to try to have empathy for the black community as a white community. And we need to understand, we need to understand people and try to respect them. Respect goes a long way. So you should respect everyone even people you might think are beneath you. No one's beneath you. We are all equal. We all have a fair shot at God's grace. God's grace shines upon us all. So don't forget that. And remember, we're all equal. We all need to relate to each other and have empathy for each other. And we need to avoid division and trying to dominate each other. We need to get rid of racial tension and tension between religions. We need to look beyond that and try to make things better for everyone. Sure, for if things improve in the black community, well, guess what? they might improve in the white community too. If things improve for the Islamic faith, well, things might improve for the Christian faith too. It's not one gains and one loses. No, we can win together. We need to step onto a new path and set new goals. And that's the new goals is everybody wins. We're going to make it work. We're going to figure it out through sharing of information and reducing the influence of corporate America. And the best way to do it, or one of, a, one of the good ways to do it, is to avoid that conquer and divide mentality. So, now let's move on to diversity in other ways. Diversity is important with our diet, with what we eat. And so we need a diverse diet, I guess with more fruits and vegetables, but we need diverse fruits and vegetables. We need many varieties of corn, many varieties of tomatoes, and many varieties of rice, and so on and so on many varieties of everything. We need lots of seed banks that have old traditional variety of seeds and native varieties instead of all these modern hybrids. See what happened is first there was breeding and um, you know breeding and selective breeding to get the best hybrids for best crop production, perhaps best flavor on the fruit, best appearance, and so on and so on. Well, that's nice, but it comes at a price. And the price is some of these crops that might be, might have all these positive qualities, such as higher yield and better tasting fruit, well, they might be more vulnerable to a certain kind of insect or mold or they might be more vulnerable to drought. So that's why you need the great diversity of crops. 
and in fact several varieties of crops should be planted in each area and it should be experimented with to see which crops do the best in each area and even crops that do poorly should still be planted anyway. They might de do poorly because you're in a wet area. Well, suddenly you might have a year of drought and the, the variety of crop that did poorly might suddenly do better in drought. Things like that. Or perhaps a certain variety of tomatoes doesn't produce hardly any tomatoes but perhaps it's really resistant to a certain kind of fungus that affects most other tomatoes. We need this diversity of foods. This is critical. This is something I learned at NC State University in my senior year of college. So let's have this diversity. What's true then in 1984 is true today, at least as far as diversity of food and having many varieties of each crop is still important. So, the diversity will provide, well, more diverse, nutri more diverse nutrients and, well, will help crop production overall because crops will be will fare better under all conditions instead of having monoculture we have one kind of crop one variety of corn that might grow great under most conditions but not might not tolerate drought well for example so you need corn that tolerates drought and corn that tolerates flood and corn that tolerates corn earworms, and so on and so on. You need a great variety. Instead of just one or two kinds, you need many kinds of each crop. Anyway, then there's genetically modified crops. Well, they may have unknown health hazards. So we should stop producing genetic genetically modified crops or we should at least reduce the amount that is produced and have it produced as an experiment and have it have limited production just for experimental use instead of widespread production without all the potential effects being known. Unfortunately many um, crops are being genetically modified and put into widespread production without all their health effects known and without thorough unbiased research being done on them. That's the key, unbiased research. Because corporate America is having more of an influence on science itself unfortunately, and it is creating what I would call a negative bias on science. In other words, let's give an example, such as genetically modified crops. Well, if Monsanto, who modifies the crop genetically, is also doing the research on the crop to see how it affects us, well, they might skew the, skew the data or overlook um, some experiments that show negative effects and dismiss those as erroneous or as a fluke instead of looking at them in more detail to discover that these health hazards might be more widespread. They often suppress the negative data and, well, and kind of encourage the positive data and put a spin on it, on their interpretation of the data. So instead of having an unbiased approach, the approach is biased. And so genetically modified crops will look better than they really are because there's a positive spin portrayed on them because Monsanto is doing the research. We need unbiased research, which means research being done by universities that are funded by the state 
and that don't have any corporate donations made to them. Just support by the alumni who don't have a bias and by the government with no bias and tuition by students with no bias except to learn more diverse information. If corporations donate too much to universities, they might have too much influence over directions of research and over the outcome of the research itself, that is the data being biased, the interpretation of the data rather being biased, and us losing out on critical information. This extends far beyond genetically modified crops. Corporate America has excessive influence on research in the area of medicine and pharmaceutical drugs. And so pharmaceutical drugs are probably made to look better than they really are. Corporate America has a negative bias on research on climate change. Often climate change, well, is made to look less severe than it is. But guess what? It is fairly severe. Try going up to northern Alaska and talking to some of the people in the communities there where permafrost is melting and buildings are sinking and having to have their foundations redone. Some, town, some towns have been moved away from the coast because of more aggressive storms caused by global warming. Also, some low-lying islands have become flooded. At least parts of them are being flooded more often because of global warming. Check out some glaciers and watch them disappear. Talk to Alaskans who lived in Alaska in Alaska for many years, like I have. I lived there 13 years, from 1987 to 2000. And I know for a fact that Portage Glacier has shrunk significantly, as well as many other glaciers in Alaska. We need to wake up and realize that climate change is real, and we need to address it aggressively, which means less corporate profits and we might have to pay more for things. But we can work it out in the long run by reducing corporate influence and reducing corporate profits. We might eventually be able to reduce prices and increase quality at the same time because we're putting a squeeze on the profits and having corporations profit less. Not one of them, all of them. We need to take that approach and take the money from the cor corporate profiteers and put it back into the pockets of the poor men and women who need the money the most. Anyway, corporate America may reduce the quality of education as well as they influence schools more by donations, well, they might be able to influence the curriculum. And by influence the curriculum, they might reduce the quality of education and certainly the diversity of education. So, like, let's give an example. Let's say Domino's Sugar donated lots of money to some high school. Well, they probably won't teach in that high school how Domino Sugar set up um, or companies similar to Domino Sugar might have set up rebellions in countries. So their plantations can become more widespread and they could have more control of the workers and the profits of their sugar. So they could profit more while the sugar workers and landowners profit less. This has played out again and again in many South American and Central American and Car Caribbean nations where sugar companies or other companies have come in 
and reworked how things work economically. So the net result is there's less money for the local landowners and less money for the local workers and more money for the corporate profits. Anyway, so we need to reduce the influence of corporate America to increase diversity, I guess is what I'm really getting at. And by increasing diversity, we could get back to a house with many rooms and discover more of those rooms. I hope you have enjoyed this section of The Casey Warder Show. Now, it is time for Independent Spiritual Foundations. Here, I look at how to establish an independent spiritual foundation. So, it would be easier for you to move from situation to situation in your life. Perhaps moving to a new church or even changing your religion. It's all easier with an independent spiritual foundation. Same with changing your friends or other life changes. Establishing an independent spiritual foundation, of course, is no easy task. However, it can be done if conditions are right. It's just a matter of setting yourself up for the right conditions and then proceeding with caution. Sure, when you're out on your own, you have to be careful. You don't want to mess up. Remember, any errors would be your fault because you're independent. Well, I guess conversely, any victories, well, would be yours because you created them. Well, you allowed the foundation for the victories to be created. And hopefully more victories than defeats or errors. But whatever happens with your independent spiritual foundation, well, in theory, you are the one responsible. So let's dive into it. First of all, you can't do this if you don't have a proper moral foundation to begin with. Then you could establish an independent spiritual foundation. And establishing a proper moral foundation may be easier said than done. So, you just have to step back and take a look at yourself and see how you operate and how you think. It is important that you care about others, that others, people's feelings and ideas and their overall situation, that all of these are important to you. You have to truly care about other people, but also you have to care about yourself and the conditions you are in and your mental state, your feelings and your ideas. So you have to care about everybody, including yourself. But it goes beyond that. For you have to have empathy. You gotta really feel what other people are going through to really understand them. So proper empathy is important. You just have to develop this over time. I guess you have to occasionally verify people's state. Ask them how they feel about a certain situation to verify that you have the proper empathy that you are feeling what they are feeling. Try to understand why they have the feelings they do. Sure, this helps your empathy too. 
and perhaps gives you a further insight to the person you care about, which might aid you in helping them, which is the goal, to assist others. Sure, but before you do so, you have to check your motivation and make sure your motivation is right. Remember, you're doing this for the other people, the people you care about. Well, except for the case of yourself, sometimes you have to do things to help yourself and to take care of yourself, to make sure everything is right for yourself, that you have a proper well, a proper mental state of well-being. Once you have your yourself established properly, then you could go out and help other people with their mental state to make sure their mental state is right and their physical situation. Sure, try to understand their feelings, but you have to have proper motivation you have to really be motivated by their concerns and just for the sake of helping them. This has nothing to do with you, as I said, unless you're helping yourself. But if you're not helping yourself, you're helping others. And when you help others, you got to focus on them. And they have to be your motivation. Sometimes, of course, you can help others and help yourself all at the same time. But it's all about the people who are you are helping and making sure that they are the focus of your motivation and not your glory or pride or proving yourself right or even gaining spiritual karma or advancement. No, that all falls short. It is simply to help the other people. That should be your motivation. Everything else will follow. Sure. So, Casey Waters Show. Producer, Casey Waters. Graphic editing, Judson Laird. Please note our new email address, CaseyWaters2 at CaseyWaters.com.